Hey, I'm Jason. Today in the lab, we're continuing our series on multi-step typing strategies. Today, we're gonna specifically talk about cross threads. We're gonna talk about what is a cross thread, how to detect it, how to improve it, repair it, and then how do we use a power tool to make sure that our typing strategies in production are as good as they can be. All right, let's check it out. All right, so what is a cross thread? All right, this bolt has a single thread you can see as it climbs. You can't see this? So no, okay, uh, all right. How about this bolt, you can see that one? Nice, all right. So this bolt has a single thread that starts at the end of the bolt and goes, climbs all the way up the cylinder, all the way up to the shank here. The nut, the threaded hole has a corresponding thread. These normally should line up if the bolt is in line with the threaded hole, but if we start the bolt in a crooked condition like this and try to drive it down, it's like tripping up the first step of a staircase. It's gonna grab the wrong thread and it's going to not interface the threads correctly and it's gonna hit the torque value way before it should and it's not gonna fully seat the bolt and it's gonna result in an unstable tightening. Let's demonstrate that with a simple program going all the way to 20 newton meters and see what kind of damage it does to the part. All right, we hit 20 newton meters. We're not even close to fully seated the bolt. Let's take a look at the damage. So as you can see, this bolt is totally cross-threaded. It hit the torque value almost right on the money. So it achieved the specification, but this bolt is not tight and will not do its job when it gets out into the field. This product is destined to fail in an assembly out in the market. So what's the right thing to do? Well, we either got to drive this bolt home all the way with one of these, or we got to repair the cross thread and do a correct tightening. Let's try this anyways. All right, so this is not the right tool for the job. We actually twisted this bolt right in half. And it's now broken completely. So what is the right tool for the job? With our smart tool and a multi-step programming strategy, we can put a cross thread restriction into the program to stop this thing at a much lower torque. So we don't actually damage the part. So we're gonna demonstrate here that we can run this bolt down in a cross thread condition, stop it before it causes the part damage, and then we can back it up, straighten the bolt out, run it down, and get a green light with a full torque and clamp load that this bolt needs to do its job and stay tight through its service life. Let's check it out. All right, so let's see if we can start off our bolt in a crooked position like this and cause a cross thread. All right, you can see we only hit 1.4 newton meters of torque. If I back this out and start it at another angle, right, that's also crooked, it's gonna hit a cross thread again, 1.76 newton meters, all right? But if I back this bolt off and straighten it out, I can successfully run it all the way down, get a green light, and actually get to the clamping force that this bolt needs to stay tight when it gets out into the field. All right, so there you have it. We don't always have one of these around when we have a cross thread, but the right way to do it is to detect the cross thread before it happens. This really does happen in a factory. I've seen this happen hundreds of times. The operator has a hard time getting the bolt in line with the hole, and it's much better if we can use the features of the power tool, in this case, the multi-step tightening strategy, to reject the cross thread before it does damage so we can reverse the part, run it down, and ensure our joint is high integrity when we're building parts in production. All right, see you next time.